you know, I, I made a, we made a couple slides just to kick things off. Let's go through the etiquette real quick, Nate. Uh, introduce yourself before speaking. We've turned a couple of these off for this meeting. Uh, cameras are optional. Just let's keep disruptive folks to a minimum and they'll be removed if necessary. We should have all of this turned off. Only co-hosts and hosts can share their screen. Um, we're just, it's just housekeeping to keep things pleasant in meetings like this is really the sum of it. And I think we'll do that today. And a couple of minor announcements, well, major announcements, let's be honest. Well, yeah, they're big. Coming. So register, register, register. We hope to see you there. It's in Seattle, September 27th through 29th. We're going to have this really cool unconference to kick things off this year, and I hope you all can attend. And then there's a link here to book your hotel. It's also available on that registration page. These are also easily found if you go to opensearch.org in the top top panel, you'll see OpenSearchCon 2023, and you'll have a link to this registration page. Off of that registration page, there is also a link to book your hotel. Um, so again, hope to see everyone there. And of course, we just got 2.9 out and there's a blog to hear all the gory details of what's in there. Please, please do register for OpenSearchCon. It's gonna be uh, awesome. Uh, we we checked out the the grounds and and saw everything and all the awesome space and uh, cool stuff within walking distance and you know there's you know it's Seattle uh, it's gonna be fun yeah it's uh, there's plenty to do there if you get uh, get an itch for uh, some adventure so let us know you're coming here's our agenda for today. So let's kick it off. Um, Jonathan, I'm not sure if you wanted to start any introduction, but I know yeah. Josh, well, Josh I, had a I, really I, good question we were waiting to hear. So if you want to do another. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I think Chris just is kind of, and I'm, you know, super excited. A lot of other folks in the community are, are interested in this topic. You know, Chris and I were chatting and said, hey, it might be worth getting a set of people who are interested in this sort of stuff together and chatting on some regular basis to review developments that we're doing in the code base, use cases we may or may not want to address, things that are happening you know, in, in this space, just because it's becoming such a critical area for these technologies. And it felt like there should be some way to get people together talking um, that we want to talk. So you know, we, we put this agenda together a few months back, um, a month back or something like that. And we can go into it, but I think if you know, maybe we end with this because since then, there's been a couple of things that have been, I think, more uh, pressing in, in in the community. One is we've got a couple of RFCs that that came out, and there's been a good discussion on the on the board on, you know, even how do we go and approach RFCs and and things that are related, and how do we do that? I think that would be a great conversation because hopefully this group is going to start spinning up and writing, you know, a bunch of great uh, features uh, in into the code base. And then it sounds like there's a second question around um, the thing we were talking about when we first joined, so we could put that as two. And then maybe we end with this, whatever time is left, because it's kind of an open-ended thing on what, or if anybody else has a topic they want to discuss. But I'd say maybe we get into the specifics of things that might affect decisions that the community is going to take, um, you know, in the next you know, couple of weeks. That's kind of my thought about it. That sounds good. I'd like to offer the floor to Josh first. I, want, I know he had a really good... He started with a really good question and introduction and I had to cut him off. So we were sure to hear it with the whole group and everyone could really, I wanted everyone to hear this. Uh, sure. So yeah, I'm uh, Josh Harrison. I um, work for a Department of Energy Research Lab, um, looking at using open search for some stuff. Um, I was just this week playing with uh, ML Commons and um, neural search and all that looks looks great. Uh, I'm I'm a little curious about the uh overall ingest um workload that's associated with uh with that and i'm sure it depends on per model and that sort of thing i'm also interested in figuring out what the uh operationalization process looks like for for something like this because you know you can have the model loaded but then you have to do an actual load step and if your ml node reboots or crashes and reboots or or, or something like that then uh your ML model is unloaded and 
if you try to do stuff against it, then it fails. And uh, so like, do I need a cron job that just goes and tries to enable it every every couple of minutes or something like that? Or uh, thinking about use cases around that and how to make that uh, a little more robust and resilient in kind of real world ser uh, server deployment scenarios. Well, if you cool. wanted to, just an idea, Nate Boot here, hi everyone. Uh, that might be something you'd want to just, uh, you know, we, not necessarily boil the ocean, but just make sure you have an alert, maybe, uh, you know, a health uh, check into open search. If you wanted to do it within the confines of open search, there's always document level alerting uh, to kind of make the world freak out if, if something breaks. But uh, yeah, I mean, only one ML node. If you've if you've got a workflow that's dependent on that ML node being up, uh, I I imagine anything uh, that's kind of standard these days would, uh, you know, check the health of the node and make sure that it's up and running. And uh, and I I don't know of any port, uh, particular uh, workflow people are using like a playbook or a, you know a, a, a Ansible playbook or anything like that. Hey, David Tippett here. Um... One oh, of the here. things that's coming out is we, have, yeah, we, I, I am here. I'm on mobile. Um, there's a there's a uh, there's a dashboard and a set of tools coming around that in the admin panel. Um, I'm not super familiar with that space, but maybe if someone uh, who is is on the phone uh, could pop in and talk about that because actually I think that's supposed to solve that use case of like, hey, you know, I need to make sure these. ML nodes are up, they're responding, and they're available. Yeah, yeah. there was a comment in chat saying that uh, yeah. there is there is auto redeployment, uh, uh, an auto redeployment feature. So yeah, that, for, that would do the job. Yeah, I think uh, we our team will create a, a series of tutorial docs uh, to explain like how to enable enable the model auto redeploy and how to. Uh, use the semantic search with the machine learning model and like uh, how to use uh, the large language model uh, together with open search. Uh, I think our team will build a series of tutorials, but now the documented the tutorials is not there. So I think that's uh, something confused for a community. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> I think yeah, we need some time, but yeah, we do have that feature. Yeah. So I think we have someone with their hand up. Uh, Samuel Herman, is the, uh, did you have a question? Yeah, yeah, I did. Uh, so one thing, I, one topic I wanted to, to bring up is the topic of evaluation pipeline. So like, let's say when you think about actually how you use these models, right? Like for, so I'm not talk, gonna talk about LLMs, uh, just wanna frame the conversation through the neural search and the semantic search. So what, what, what ends up happening, right? Is that you're gonna like, okay, you're gonna go and you're gonna try a model, right? Say so it's a pre-trained one. And, and then you're going to try it in the context of neural search, which is, uh, say, for example, a QA and a uh, scenario. And, and then um, what eventually happens, right, is like, okay, you try a model, and, and then what? How do you know that, that it's the right good thing for you? So if you look at all the research paper for, for about uh, the topic, like for example, the dense passage retrieval, I can, I can link, uh, you know, like here, I'm gonna link this paper here, right? For example. Um, so the, the papers, they all rely on basically an index, right? It's about really taking, the, taking all the vectors, indexing them, and then running uh, a series of uh, benchmark queries uh, to measure accuracy. So uh, basically the question I'm, I'm asking is like, uh, do you guys think we should, uh, we should bake uh, the evaluation, this part of the evaluation into like um, our, our API somehow? So for example, you, you can provide like your own, um, you know, benchmark queries say in like a file or some format. And then uh, you can like uh, get the uh, model, like model accuracy. Uh, and it could be any model. <clears throat> so I was I was curious to hear uh, you know the thoughts of the community around that because I, I do see that we do things like you know supporting chat and this kind of stuff. But I, I think this is like such a basic thing, <laughs> and I was wondering if uh, you know there's interest on, on the community side to to augment that uh, evaluation uh, step. 
let let me know if anyone one. have any any thoughts on that. So I'm curious to hear also like the the open search theme if they have any any thoughts around that. Hi, this is Stavros McCrackis. I'm product manager on Open Search, and uh, evaluating quality is really important to us right now. Many people don't have good tools for it, and that's definitely on our roadmap for the coming year to improve the quality of the the tools for uh, for looking at at the results. I mean, right now there are open source tools available like uh, Cupid, for example. I don't know if you've, you've tried that, um, but uh, we, we are aware that there's there's an issue in quality evaluation and and tuning. So when you, especially when you have, let's say a hybrid search, which tends to work better than either lexical or a vector separately, you want to tune the relative weights of the two. Right now, people have no, no um, systematic way of doing that. So yes, absolutely. This sort of thing is very important. Yeah. So I think I think before tuning, um, I'm mostly thinking right now about the evaluation step. I understand that tuning can be a more uh, complex thing, but but just uh, even for not uh, neural search, just for like um, you know evaluating the the precision of search relevance. Um, I was I'm I'm wondering if uh, like uh, what what your thoughts are on this one. Yeah, absolutely. So we do have a, a, a pretty complete roadmap in that area. Uh, we haven't really started uh, building it out yet. We do have one simple tool available right now. I don't know if you've seen on the um, on the uh, dashboards we have a under. I think it go, goes under uh, relevance. There is a, a query comparison tool where if you have two different DSL queries and you have a single user query, you can compare the results. Uh, it's a very, very simple-minded tool. I, I admit it myself. This is this is not uh, rocket science, but it, it's a good start. It's it's useful for what they call the looks good to me level of of evaluation, where you're saying, okay, let me try two different DSL queries and and see which one performs better. How should I weight the different fields? Uh, uh, what ingestion pipeline should I use? All that sort of thing. So that that's just a, a small step in that direction. But I would encourage you to to put up a, an issue on uh, on GitHub asking for tools like that 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 kind of feedback is is what helps us uh, refine our, our roadmap what exactly do you want out of a, uh, an evaluation tool and so on this is mehul hey stavros how are you hi guys huh? um totally agree with uh, with um you know with the speaker there earlier and and you stavros i think um you know it's a good first cut to have a couple of you know queries running side by side but it's you know based on our conversations with um, customers and actually going into the you know, going into POCs and deployments with them, they just don't know. They just don't know where where things stand as we give them better um, better search results, and um, and we just need to make sure that the the right APIs are available for them to give the feedback. Um, the right mechanisms are available so they can actually you know deploy it. You know, maybe maybe we need A/B testing like solutions out there. Maybe we need something else, but. Um, yeah, I, 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 all, all of that is on our roadmap, but uh, not, yeah. not implemented yet. And uh, what can I say? Um, I can say I just had a meeting with my engineering counterparts, and one uh, observation they had was that we don't have many uh, pieces of feedback like that on GitHub or for those of, on the managed service in PFRs in, in uh, feedback uh, to to our, our, um, yeah. our account managers. So if it's important to you, please raise it with your account manager. If you're on the managed service, please raise it in GitHub uh, if you're on the um, on the uh, open source version, we really need that feedback. We we need to know what you need. And right now, I've collected a lot of qualitative feedback from people, but I haven't been able to uh, look at to tell my peers, "Hey guys, look, we have ten comments out on GitHub complaining about not being able to evaluate results." That's fair. That's fair. I'm, I'm sure on the open source side, we can we can certainly chime in there. Uh, go ahead, John. I, I didn't mean to cut you so, off. Sorry. So just a uh, just a. Uh, one, one last follow up. Uh, do you mind sharing? So, by the way, it's, this is Sam. I'm from the OCI Open Search. Uh, so, I'm architect on the OCI Open Search. Hi, Sam. So, so, so just uh, one last follow up. So, Star Wars, do you mind sharing the uh, roadmap uh, if you have it uh, publicly available? That, that would be great because we, uh, you know, I think it would help us uh, to know before we start writing things on GitHub. <laughs> Uh, to, to identify the gaps and you know make, make the relevant suggestions. Makes sense. Uh, I'll I'll put that up probably as a, an RFC in the next few weeks. Yeah, plus, plus one there. This is John from from Aaron. That would help helpful. We're, we're thinking about different ways, kind of to Mabel's point on how 
you know, we think customers might interpret um, relevance and in, in the right way to display it all. And if we kind of knew as a community what what sort of approaches we were coalescing around, we might be able to help on that versus everyone kind of running in a different direction and then kind of confusing customers with with too many different ways. That's great. Uh, and I'll, I'll give you a preview of one thing that we're thinking about, which is which we're actually working on already, which is standardizing search logging. Uh, we've discovered in talking to customers that Every customer has some sort of logging, most of it, frankly, half-assed. They say it themselves. I'm not, it's not my judgment. Um, and uh, they would like better logging. So we're putting uh, together a standardized logging framework. The nice thing about that is that it will have a standard schema. So it will make it easier for the community to build open source tools on top of it that you can share with each other as well. Yeah, yeah, I, I think, yeah, I think this is, uh, this is step in the right direction, um, but, but I think, uh, for the neural search, um, it's, uh, you know, it would be nice. Uh, well, in any case, I, I kind of repeat myself, but I think it's, a, I, I view it as an extension of, of search problems. Hey, absolutely. I mean, neural search is one tool among many. I don't think it replaces the other tools. It, it, it augments them. It complements them. Is the is the schema and, and the logs that are going to be there, they're, they're going to be, are they going to be another index in open search itself or is it going to be um, external to open search? It'd be cool to use open search to right. so, go. So the, 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 the theory is that it will be open to any, um, any repository you want. The, the first version will be on open search. There is an RFC about that, by the way. So that's up on the site, uh, an RFC about user behavior logging. Uh, so you might want to take a look at that and give feedback. Okay, cool. Thank you. It looks like uh, someone has a hand up. Uh, Fernando? Hi, uh, thanks. Uh, I'm Fernando CTO at Set Alpha. So I wanted to kind of piggyback on this discussion uh, surrounding uh, evaluation for neural search uh, to maybe kind of raise the point of the infrastructure complexities of evaluating different models. Uh, might not be completely familiar with these um, ML nodes. Uh, but maybe my question is more like when you create a new model, you, you want to maybe test against a previous version. So you need to actually replicate your index, um, using this new model, um, just kind of wondering if there is any solution around this issue. I'm so happy you bring that up, um, because, and, and, and it tells me that I really, really, really need to put my RFC out about, uh, our evaluation tools, because that's exactly the kind of thing that that we we want to help you you do. And it's really nice to hear that from the neural search perspective, and not just from the lexical search perspective, people care about this. Because uh, some, sometimes I get the impression that people think that neural search is going to be a silver bullet and it's going to solve all their problems with no thinking. But I think you and I know that uh, it's it's a journey, and uh, it needs tuning, and it needs choosing the right models, and it probably needs a fine tuning models and all that sort of thing. Is anyone actively using any of the uh, technologies uh, these people are talking about? Sorry, these people, Stavros and... and uh... You mean evaluation technologies? Uh, yeah, I'd be curious to know if people are using, or, for example, uh, Cupid. Um, yeah, well, and, I mean, in, in general, I uh, I tend to go look at these these models that are out there. I was just with uh david tippett and we were scrolling through them and it's like there's there's a lot of models that people have have put out there and uh yeah it's it it does seem to you know as as they become more abundant we need more ability to to kind of see how they're performing so it sounds like the the side-by-side -side query thing you mentioned uh would be very helpful so so i see that mark that you uh, uh, basically link the rfc for the uh logging of uh, user behavior. Uh, thank you. Uh, I think that's uh, very important uh, as well. And I forgot to, to bring that one up. Thank you for that. Yeah, no, and I'm also glad to hear that people are thinking about it, uh, measuring search results overall. And, and like Sabra said, not just uh, on lexical. So it's great. Yeah. We even we might be, have been thinking a little more about it in terms of uh, lexical, frankly. So could use that feedback. Speak for yourself, Mark. We meaning it was the royal we. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> One.
Yes, it was mostly about you, Stavros. Oh, thank Just, you. Yeah. I'm seeing a uh, another hand up, uh, Heeman. Hi, uh, yes, I'm from Amazon AWS Open Search, and I wondering, like, when we are talking about the um, the quality or performance comparison between models, should we uh, test it inside the Open Search? Should we should should there be other tool outside of the Open Search just uh, testing or evaluating the model itself. Will there be any difference evaluating model outside of the open search or inside of open search? Yeah, uh, maybe I can say one thing. Uh, I think it's a great question. Uh, one thing that I think kind of stands out is that uh, if you have, like, say, the evaluation data within open search, then it will be nice if you have like an API call. Otherwise, you, you it's it's kind of weird, right? You're gonna have to read data out and then like query data back in. Uh, but uh, if you have ex data externally, in the, the set say of questions and expected answers, and it's like external in a file or something, then then maybe it's it could be external. So that is, is I think, a very good question. And do you think uh, uh, if that, that changes when talking about generative uh, models, since the maybe if you have a QA system, the answer might be generated outside of open search? Well, we, we, we're thinking about uh, ways to integrate uh, generative models within the open search process. So using search pipelines, for example, and other mechanisms, you can integrate LLMs. There, there are a variety of applications for LMs. People tend to talk about the conversational case, but there's also the summarization case. There, there, there are many uses for LMs in search. Um, frankly, the, the conversational case, I don't know if anyone really knows how to evaluate that today. I'm, I'm sure people are researching it, but when the quality of the result depends on an interaction, uh, standard search criteria, search metrics don't really work very well. You say, okay, at the end of three queries, I got my answer to my question. Uh, could I have gotten it in two queries um, or how many words or, you know, uh, it, it's, I don't think we have good ways of evaluating that. So I, I think of some example I might try, I might say, okay, let's say we have a product search for cameras and I say, find me uh, super zoom wide angle lenses. And it comes back with, oh, here's some super zoom wide angle lenses. It says, no, 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 I'm only interested in mirrorless. Oh, okay, here are some mirrorless super zoom. Uh, well, I'm actually only interested in APS-C and not in, in uh, whatever, in uh, uh, four thirds. Oh, well, if you're interested in APS-C, here are some. So what exactly are you gonna evaluate when you get the results? It's, it's, uh, it's much more subtle, I think, than, than the kind of thing we're doing with regular search. I'm, I'm sure people will, will find solutions to this and will incorporate them as people think about that, but it, it is difficult to, to handle conversational search. Summarization is easier because then you say, all right, we, we still have a list of 10 links as it were, but they, we just do a better job of summarizing the contents of the links. That, that's a fairly classic evaluation process. So uh, now if anyone has great ideas about evaluating conversational search, I'd love to hear them. We're, we're doing some stuff we, we with um, Aaron, I've worked with some customers and found that kind of I actually we put some of this in the RFC that we put out too, that you know LLMs alongside um, semantic search. So if you guys are familiar with RAG, um, the technique and kind of combining both has been helpful. And we found that that summarization is is something that customers are super interested in, where you know even the search results um, giving summaries into what each thing is and things like that. That um, we've been using OpenAI. Um, that's been working really well for these sorts of things. We've we've messed around with some of the open source models, but just haven't found the accuracy and the quality of those, like the latest Falcon release, to be um, to be nearly as good. We found that kind of yeah, summarization and question answering out of you know sets of uh, supersets of information uh, has been has been resonating quite well. Has anybody else played around with this stuff or seen uh, seen any of their, their users um, asking for, for ways in which this to be integrated? I I don't know personally, but I uh, I myself am actually going to start going on that journey of uh, you know creating indices and uploading models and then uh, you know, 
vectorizing searches and stuff. So it's uh, I'll be interested to hear if anyone else has any feedback. Hi, my name's Tyler, and uh, I haven't used the conversational search, but I was recently asked about adding that, uh, which is why I came today. We're using open search for just basic searching today. And we have the data for, um, it's like a content uh, database. So um, we have a product owner that's uh, looking to have an interaction like, hey, I'd like to see uh, videos about puppies today. And then maybe follow that up with like a multi-turn dialogue to say, um, how about you mix in some kittens with those puppies? <laughs> or um, show me adults' pets playing and then know that there should be like adult dogs and adult cats. Um, so that's gotten me thinking of how we can use the open search tooling for, for cases like that. I'm kind of curious if anyone's kind of gone down that path before. Yeah, we're definitely looking at the ways of integrating uh, things like that, RAG and summarization, uh, both for, well, we're in a RAG both for summarization use cases and for conversational use cases. As I say, one of, one of the challenges there is is evaluating the results for for summarization. Uh, I mean, excuse me, for a conversational. For summarization, I think the uh, the evaluation process is fairly straightforward. Thank you. Yeah, I'm just getting started and diving in, so it's kind of so. Exciting. Yeah, I mean, when uh, if you say I'd like to see some videos about puppies today, and it comes back with uh, all one breed, are you happy or not? You know, um, uh, what if um, what if it mixes in adult dogs? Is that good or bad? Um, uh, you know, and what if you refine it, as you said, say, well, I want to see puppies playing with kittens, uh, have fun. Uh, and, um, uh, you know, how many interactions does it take until you get what you're really looking for? What does your information need, as they say in the information retrieval feed? What, what, what did you really want to find? Um, which, of course, is always a problem with, with uh, search evaluation. One, I mean, were one you looking at puppies because you wanted cute videos or were you looking for puppies because you wanted to adopt one and you wanted to see different breeds? You know, they're different. Uh, information needs you might have. Uh, but that's true, of course, in regular search. You say, if you, if you go to a standard lexical thing, you say puppies, you say, okay, fine. Uh, it's like the most popular search on Google in the olden days was sex. And you say, okay, what about it? You know, do you want porn? Do you want health information? Uh, do you want medical information? No, uh, probably porn, but yeah. Uh, hey, this is Sean. I'm a dev manager in open search. My team owns the machine learning uh, related applications. I just want to add it here, like you know, the team actually has built a bunch of uh, POCs around this use case. For example, we, we've we created a like a post processor in search pipeline to handle the RAG use case. Uh, the team also like uh, built some POC around this conversation plugin, uh, which uh, has been discussed in you know a couple of RFCs this 1150 and the 1151, yeah, which being shared by me now in the chat. Uh, you know, uh, it's it's got to know that, that there's so many interest around this area. We uh, we will try to you know uh, make our code you know public as soon as possible. The 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 post processor of the search pipeline about the summarization case we probably can. You know, publish that uh, you know around uh, maybe a two point ten timeline. Uh, the other one, you know, around the conversation, I think there's still some like a discussion around that. Um, I don't know if we're gonna have some time in this uh, in this meeting to discuss that. Uh, if not, we can schedule another another session to focus on you know how to merge that uh, that uh, that two RFCs. Yeah. Actually, I think yeah. we should. We talked about in the ML comms. This is John. Um, actually, that might yeah. be a good segue into kind of talking about it because that's one of the topics mm -hmm. that before this meeting we came in. And yeah. you know, I think for for you know, we're kind of looking on kind of how the RFC process works and talking to a few people and and kind of what you know, my proposal here might be is, you know, um, one one five zero basically talks about conversational stuff um, and, you know, talks about, you know, the API memory using search pipelines and how to build kind of a conversational search, say chatbot for ways to interact with stuff um, in open search. And, you know, based on just kind of simplicity, I'm trying to have, you know, the, the usual RFC process and, you know, I'm relatively new in this community, but in, you know, Spark and Hadoop and some of the other Redis, I've been in some of the other ones. 
Um, it seems like you know you kind of have one place to talk about a certain set of ideas, um, comment on and iterate on it to make sure the community likes the approach. Um, and then um, for this, the RFC, other RFC 1151, I think there's a lot of overlap, but it seems like the yeah. difference that would warrant maybe a new RFC is this idea of should open source search be able to be like an arbitrary chatbot platform? It seems like that's where the conversation is kind of going, where I think we all probably agree that customers want to interact with their data in open search using natural language. And this is where RAG and these other things uh, become useful. And that's basically the, the, the kind of um, spirit of 1150. It seems like the difference, the delta between this, the uh, second RFC that showed up and the, the original one is the idea of should should open search be a platform where you can like if is everyone here familiar with like Fixie, Fixie and kind of Langchain and some of these general ways to build these multi-agent architectures that have like nothing to do with necessarily search. It's like, you know, write a poem or, you know, tell me the weather today and it goes and searches the internet or does all sorts of stuff that LLMs can do. I think Amazon actually just released a, um, a service that does some of this sort of stuff too. Um, and you could argue, hey, that, that could be useful in the open search thing. I think you can make also an argument that, hey, this is a little bit outside of mm -hmm. open search, perfect use case for a plugin but shouldn't be part of anything that's like core or ML commons stuff because it's, you know, a little bit out. But I think that RFC is what 1151 could pivot to. And then the discussion could be of what does the community think of, of this being A, important for open search customers and B, something that like should be within the project versus, versus something else. And so I think that's my recommendation on how to kind of simplify all these ideas and make it kind of crisp to where we can all channel our attention on RAG and that stuff in one place. And then in the other RFC talk about, are there any kind of net new areas beyond natural language search in LLMs and RAG over data and open search that could be interesting and, and what customers are asking for stuff there. So just putting that out there, that kind of makes sense to me at least, you know, curious what, what other folks think um, on that. I, I think I follow where you're going there. Uh, what, what I'm imagining in my head is, uh, not necessarily uh, people hosting their own open search, but uh, say like for the managed service in the enterprise area of things, people want to be able to just kind of point at an arbitrary set of data and then be able to answer questions or ask questions about it and get answers. So I think this, where you're going with the, what is it, the retrieval assisted generation uh, are are correct. Uh, the, the question I'm more interested in is, uh, well, in addition to that, is whether the 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 want for this kind of thing is is enterprise or in uh, just generic builders hoping to make uh, cool things, and uh, so there's probably a lot of overlap in the two. Well, what we've seen at least is you know the the kind of and that's why we kind of wrote one one five zero the way that we did based on the customers we were chatting with. Is that you know there's the a strong use case for I've got a you know a lot of unstructured data whether it's you know documents and, and knowledge bases or kind of uh, you know metadata around stuff that I want to search for but I want to use um, you know obviously semantic search and hybrid search for better you know results for the retrieval part in RAG but then you know pluggable LLMs and that sort of stuff so that you know I've got kind of the full experience and that basically is a chat experience right because. If you look at the way we've, we've kind of um, put up the proposal, you know, your last question has, has relevance to the thing that you asked and, and so on and so forth. But the idea there is that it's all centered around basically the knowledge ingrained in an LLM, but primarily used for summarization and question answering. But it's, it's pretty incredible. These LLMs, you know, if you ask a medical question, it understands all sorts of medical terminology and can then sort through your data as if a professional doctor would do it, which is, you know, as folks who messed around with this stuff. You know, it's pretty remarkable what it could do, um, but it's still focused on, you know, data in, in open search. And what we've seen is that customers who want to do, um, we come, we'll come across a, cute, a few who want to say use something like Fixie where they have multi-agent stuff, but the other agents, and at least these customers mind the architecture, live outside of the kind of RAG system in open search. So let's say they had like Snowflake or some other databases they wouldn't expect necessarily the federated queries to come out of open search. They'd be running some application stack because they've got all sorts of arbitrary stuff that lives outside of a search um, analytics product. 
and you know things that might go and you know query the internet for the weather or whatever. And 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 there are products that do that, like Fixie, and you can you can build some of this stuff with Lane Chain. But they think of Open Search and RAG and the stuff that at least we're proposing as like a building block there. And once again, I think that kind of goes back to you know from the community's perspective. You know, do we feel that open search should be focused on leveraging these LLMs? It's still in the context of what an open search thing does, or are we trying to go rebuild this arbitrary like lane chain, which you know you can build stuff that that um, is helpful alongside it, but is you know is different. Um, so John, yeah. just uh, just want to clarify here, like the I think the purpose of the one one five one is definitely not to. You know, re-implement or replace uh, long chains functionality here. It's more like complement complementary. The whole purpose of that is to making you know creating this kind of conversation or dialogue based application easier within Open Search. Um, I, I think the, the 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 pain point here is like you know I I, I know that a lot of uh, people who especially the launching users you know who are already familiar with with the framework, they tend to do this uh you know what you call arbitrary kind of uh, stuff outside of uh you know open search, but the the pain point there is like you know a to make a you know a developer to you know to create such an application they need to be familiar with both open search and launching. And the code probably was sitting outside of the launching, which, uh, you know, because in open search, there's a, you know, a, a lot of uh, infrastructure we've already done to, you know, uh, to, to support the, the, for example, the managing the resource, you know, having some of the functionality within open search will make it easier to create such an application. Uh, so yeah, basically, what we try to do here is uh, it's more like complementary to the launching functionality, not like to replace or you know um, reimplement yeah. everything well, there. My, my my recommendation would be because it's not entirely clear what what that means because basically we've got in one one five zero kind of the 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 kind of conversational search chatbots around search with open search and all that is divine. I think what might be helpful with one one five one is kind of crisply explain. You know what is the then additive thing on top of that? Because I mean, you mentioned I think something around hey, we want to build like generic chatbots, but it was difficult for me to understand a little bit of what you know what exactly those differences are, and then how that would you know kind of relate to Langchain or something like that. And I think the debate yep. there should be, you know, and I'm curious what other people in the community think of how much yep. should open search be extended to be kind of a, a multi-agent chat platform versus saying you know hey. On the core stuff we're going to do, we're going to make it really easy for somebody who's got, you know, semantic search set up, neural search set up in, in open search and, and wants to set up RAG with, you know, the ability to, to call out to these LLMs and stuff. But the idea is that the corpus of information is going to be an open search thing. Um, yeah. there. And I think it's kind of a, just a philosophical debate. And that's why I think 1151, if you could focus that in that area, that seems like the net difference between 1150 and 1151 is this idea, then we can mm -hmm. get the right discussions in each channel and get the kind of community to focus in each area. And I think what we'll come out with is, you know, a set of tools to do that. And then yeah. depending on where we land with 1151, I, my guess is a plugin that is not core in core, but a plugin to say, hey, if you want to go and build these kind of more futuristic multi-agent chat things, you know, you could use Langchain or maybe you could use some of this stuff. Um, and see, we, we've yeah. seen customers preferring to use lane chain and some of these other things because they they're from a separation of concerns point of view. Um, yeah, but we'd love to just kind of you know it's a, it's a lot of a lot of people doing stuff out there, so it'd be interesting to see uh, where we end up. A couple people with their hands up, by the way, Jeff. I was actually thinking about another potential plugin. I'm not sure whether it's up or not. It's more about like collaborating with Cold Whisper. It's like the Amazon. Um, like chat GPT for coding. So in a dashboard, when people try to like make a query about some source of data, I was thinking if they can just put a comment there, like I want to query for um, like, for example, one of the documents named something, and then you would generate the actual query out of the comments. I think that will be really helpful for a lot of developer with like no prior experience. Cause when I started coding, uh, like coding the queries, I have to look through all the documentation and find out like which kind of query is actually what I wanted. But sometimes if they are like really in a hurry, I think it would be good if like there's a model that can generate the query out of it. 
And by the way, I, I'm Jeffrey and um, I'm from AWS Open Search um, use cases team. Yep. So I'm just wondering, is there like a roadmap or any possibility that there will be such collaboration with Code Whisper or other platform that we can create such a like code coding chat GPT for that? Maybe the right thing is put an issue in GitHub or something with a suggestion and see if it gains momentum. Oh, I have not put an issue, but I I'll definitely do that afterwards, I think. But just to be clear, you're you're but you're asking about semantic parsing, right? Taking natural language and turning it into open search query. Yeah, that's basically it. I think we're starting to build oh, by the way, David. Um open or AWS open search. So I think we're starting to build the tools to enable these things, right? We just released the the what is it? ML connectors as well. And, you know, we've got we're starting to build all of these building blocks that will enable these use cases. And I think we might need to step back and say, you know, is is the 1151, you know, is a chat agent the right thing? Or do we just build tools that enable these sorts of use cases? Because a chat agent, right, it's it's just one use case of this RAG workflow. And we start to have these tools, right? Like we have search pipelines now. How do we enable search pipelines to enable people to create these types of plugins, right? So maybe it's not just one plugin, but it's just, you know, taking a step back to generally looking at the workflow and saying, you know, maybe chat agent isn't the right plugin. Maybe how do we enable more things like chat agents or generative code or things like that to be built in the community. Hi, this is Evan from AWS. Um, I just have a question. So we've talked about implementing these sort of extensions that would add ML capabilities in two different ways. One of them is via plugins and the other is via processors that would be in the search pipelines. So I'm just wondering going forward, kind of what is the strategy for choosing one or the other? Hey, it's Mark uh, with AWS. Um, the there's they're not exactly exclusive. Um, so when you think about a processor, a search processor, you think the search processors can handle search requests and search responses. They're working at um, they don't work at they do, don't do anything at the shard level. Right? They're all operating at the coordinator node, uh, where a plugin has. So they're in a lot of ways they're simpler to build the search processor, but they don't give you as much access. Where the plugins, ha you have everything available uh, to you. There's also to, you know, there's also, we just uh, put out extensions. It's still experimental. That's another thing to look at. But if you think about them as just their Java interfaces, so you can have a processor that is also a plugin if you need that access to something. Um, and you can have a processor that is also an extension. It's just an interface that has that uh, implements very few actual methods. So, um, so I think it depends. And, and one of the one of the sort of secondary goals of search pipelines and is to help simplify those plugins and extensions by, you know, focusing them on fewer things, just the things that you need that access for uh hopefully that that helps and we're, we're gonna have a blog post come out uh in the next week or two uh that hopefully will help explain that okay perfect okay. thanks mark yeah sure yeah. Uh, so this is... sorry go ahead austin yeah this is austin from aaron um so i just wanted to clarify just add to what mark just said right so if you actually look at the current proposal for how we think about conversational search uh, in open search. Um, and, and as Mark said, it's not plugins versus, you know, search processors um, and, and going forward, you know, so you, you are going to get some search processors as part of open search core, but you can enable additional processors as plugins, right? And so if you look at our proposal, we, we are putting in, uh, we're, we're, we are proposing new search pipeline, you know, request response processors to enable conversational search. 
but then there are also additional plugins um, that we're introducing to introduce new conversational API, as well as conversational memory. So like there are going to be plugins that go with that 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 introduce this new experience, but underneath there there is going to be uh, search pipeline extensions, you know, in the form of request and response processors that will actually enable this you know, um, uh, the conversational, like, you know, calling out to open AI and other large language models and these things. So they, they kind of go together. Well, so here's my understanding here. Like, you know, the, I think, uh, in, in your proposal, Austin, there's actually three part. One is a plugin to maintain or access to the converse, to the history, uh, conversation history. The right. second part is the integration with the switch, uh, with the, with, uh, you know, from search pipeline to this, uh, you know, conversation uh, uh, plugin. The third part is probably more about another, uh, you know, another plugin or another mechanism to handle this kind of dialogue or conversation based application. Uh, I feel like the search pipeline is good for those kind of a single turn search, right? Like, you know, you got to request either rack or, but it's one, one single turnaround. But you know, for the multi-turn uh, conversation-based uh, search, there, you, you, you need some mechanism, either another new plugin or conversation API or some, some mechanism to, to handle that. Uh, it seems to me like you know, everyone agree this uh, conversation plugin is needed to, you, know, you need access to those memory. Uh, also the, you know, the, the, the additional processor in the search pipeline to handle this is also required. It's probably just the third part, you know, the way to handle those multi-turn or conversation that's still like under discussion. I think we probably should have some uh, further discussion on, you know, how, uh, how we want to, how we want to handle that. Well, I think, did, did you, oh, go ahead, Austin. No, just to, just to just uh, respond to that. I mean, we should definitely have further discussion, you know, mm -hmm. We're not going to get to discuss everything today in this meeting, but yeah. uh, so the you can kind of think of those three things you just mentioned as like adding incremental functionality, right? So if, if you if you're just interacting with search pipelines, then you know um, you can you can still leverage you know remote inference, and you can have you know summarization of answers and you can still do some gen ai right and then you enable conversational memory on top of that then you have conversations right right and then you enable conversation plugin then then you can then build the conversation agents and other applications on top that you know so you don't have to go through you don't have to use a search api but instead you can just use conversation api to have, you know, conversations with the multiple interactions with a cohesive context that go with that conversation. So that, that you can have these incremental use cases that build on top of each other. I'd um, love to hear Jeremy Andrews question as well, if we if we can make time. Hey, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, yeah, my name is Jeremy Andrews, uh, software engineer, um, relatively new to open search. So just setting the stage for what I'm about to ask, um, our company has recently made the transition over. Um, so not only are we new to using open search uh, as compared to Elastic, but um, we don't have any AI set up. And I know right now, at least within our company, there's a lot of interest in exploring it as a possibility. Um, our primary use cases has been um, using Open search for, or sorry, Elastic and Open Search for log-based um, data. So, just, and I'm not sure if this is the correct place to ask this, but um, in terms of exploring use cases for generative AI and search, um, it seems like just based on this conversation, a lot of it has been focused around the idea of um, having like a chat-based or like a conversational-based um type of ai experience but is there any other type of use cases out there um that would be worth exploring i guess I'm, I'm more so looking for knowledge and just kind of asking the community and again i don't know if this is the right platform for this yeah i think earlier someone mentioned uh, uh, summarization is an important use case another important use case i mean you can do re-ranking using the llms 
Um, uh, it's a pretty expensive way to do it, but uh, I, I, one thing, one issue that hasn't been brought up in discussion so far is the cost of LLMs. So I'd be curious to see how many of you have been thinking about the money cost and the latency cost of LLMs as a trade-off in what you're doing. I don't want to pivot away from Jeremy's question. We, we've been thinking about that a lot and we've kind of said, hey, look, you know, the costs will continue going down and, you know, hopefully as the open source models get better and better, there might be other ways you can um, uh, host, host your own thing. And we're excited for some of the remote uh, features that are coming uh, in open search. But um, yeah, it is, it is sort of a, a thing that we're, we've kept in mind, but have, you know, believe that the experience you know, we've seen people willing to to want to pay the extra fee to get to get that experience. The throttling, though, is something that is real that we have been throttled by OpenAI, and that kind of the latency goes way up. So we are thinking about ways to to get around that. We got one more question. We have one hand raised, Fernando. I'd probably have time for one more. We got a few minutes left. Yeah, maybe I uh, just wanted, because this uh, discussion about how to extend open search is interesting, but I wanted to share maybe one experience of building rack systems in enterprise. I feel like currently I don't see the need of having this new tool. I mean, it might be good to have uh, alternatives to Langchain, for example, but the problem for us is more a foundational issue of search. Like for example, for rack systems, one use case might be similar to what, uh, Stavros was mentioned before, which is like, I want to know multiple things around the same topic, but if I do an URL search, I just want to, I'm going to get results about one specific topic, right? So how do you uh, go around that and actually serve results, which are more like um, recall oriented, if that's the correct term, uh, where you actually feed this information into the, into the, into the LLM. I think this is kind of currently the, that, that, that's a great question. I think uh, the search field has struggled for a long time with uh, variety or diversity, whatever you want to call it, in results. So one attitude towards ambiguous queries, you take a query, I mean, the, the one we used to use was Saturn. In the olden days, there was a car named Saturn, as well as a planet named Saturn and a god named Saturn, and so on. So one approach to that is instead of trying to have a global ranking of how Saturn-y is this result, you say, well, the first result is going to be about the car, the second result is going to be about the planet, the third result is going to be about the god, and so on. And then the user can help you find which is the best result. Now, of course, that, that feeds also into the conversational case. In the conversational case, you say, oh, you're interested about in Saturn, which one are you interested in, this, this, or this? So the, all, all, they're all different tools for this. And um, I, I actually think that um, diversity in search results is an underexplored area that more people could uh, think about. And is this something that you're kind of exploring is in your RFCs uh, surrounding these uh, search uh, login functionality? I have not looked into that myself. I mean, I, I think it's an important issue, but I think a more fundamental issue is, is uh, uh, quality evaluation. So we want to get the fundamental thing done first, and then we can start thinking about second order things like, uh, like diversity. But you can do diversity today. I mean, one way of doing diversity today is you do multiple par parallel searches and blend the results, for example. Um, <clears throat> or you can look at the results, you could re-rank them, you could cluster the results uh, with uh, vectors and look for different clusters. I mean, there, there, there are a variety of approaches. Yeah, makes sense, thanks. Hey, I know we're almost off time. Just wanna ask the community one thing. Like, uh, like I mentioned, the team has built a you know, a couple of POCs around like a search summarization and a conversation of search. I'm wondering like if, uh, you know, we're interested to see some, uh, you know, brief demo in our next community meeting. So Sean, this is, uh, this is Ben from Aaron as well. I think uh, alongside that, we also want to understand mm. how we can kind of get involved because we've also been building a lot of POCs and, and right now we've just got two parallel yeah. sets of POCs for all this stuff. And I know that you know, historically, most mm -hmm. of the, the development here has come from, from your team. And we want to obviously, you know, acknowledge and leverage yeah, the, totally. the work your team has done, but we want to figure out how we can play too. So yeah. I would love to kind of have some, uh, some process discussion at some point on um, yeah. how we can make sure that we're kind of aligned going forward. 
Totally, totally. That's uh, I feel like this is probably a good time to do this kind of demoing, just to baseline like a you know what what are the status of uh, you know each of us, and then we decide how to merge the effort. Right. We certainly don't want to you know duplicate the work here. Yeah, well, that's kind of why I was saying you know this is kind of how generally you know open source communities do a lot of this through the RFC yeah. process, where you have you know an RFC that's out on a topic, you've yeah. got the community iterating and commenting. But yeah. the key is, is separating the RFCs by topic. That is kind of a, a red flag generally when you see two RFCs that have too much overlap and aren't like referencing the right thing. That's at least in my experience, you're like, well, hold on, something, a process problem. So that's why I think my suggestion is, is for really kind of getting things super crisp, we have one RFC, uh, 1150 that kind of focuses on RAG, conversational search, chat on open search stuff. And we just focus on everyone getting their ideas on that. If we don't like the way search pipelines are being used, great. But let's have that discussion first and foremost in the comments. And then if we need to get together to discuss it, we can. But I think the key is, is that that all needs to be tracked in the issue so that people can go back, the community can go back and see what it is. With 1151, then we say, all right, well, what's the delta on top of that theme? And I think the way at least I've read it was this kind of more arbitrary chatbot type use case pivot the title on that to really focus on the Delta. And then we can get a great community discussion on that. What we've done there is we avoid the overlap. We've got each area kind of um, uh, tracked and having comments and not really conflating a bunch of stuff. Because right now I think I, it looks to me like there's a lot of conflation around the two. And so I think that no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say that's a conflation. You know, I think that actually, if you look into the two RFCs, the, the goal the, the things that we try to do are the same. It's just the approach. Like I said, it's the yeah, third so, so, part of that. The approach is a little bit different, yeah, which is fine. totally fine, yeah. right? As a, this is an open community. Everyone yeah. you know, can build their POC and uh, bring it up here. Um, yeah, what, what I'd recommend though, is you know, just for efficiency point of view, if you have a different idea on architecture and how to do that, instead of bifurcating, I would say comment on the RFC yeah. that's on that topic and say, hey, this architecture doesn't make any sense. Why aren't you doing this? And why aren't you doing that? Kind of like an AWS design review. I and mean, you guys have those, you know, same deal, right? Um, you know, you, you um, would go and do that. But the key is, is that instead of everyone running in different directions and then causing customer confusion on having a bunch of different ways to do something and duplicate effort, we can all come together around these two themes and then make a call. Uh, unless what we're saying is in open search, we want to have 10 different ways to do everything. That's yeah. also a strategy to do, but I would say that, especially given um, you know, there's other competing software stacks in this world that do this exact same thing. If we don't make this easy for customers to use and very crisp, they're going to go use something else because it's going to be too confusing on exactly what what the right way to do something is. That's my biggest concern is is more of somebody saying, "All right, we're going to go use Elastic. We're going to go use Pinecone and some other stuff," and you know, really want to avoid that. So that's kind of why I keep bringing it up. The, the more crisp and organized we are, I think the better we're going to end product we're going to give to customers and make it super easy to understand exactly how to get done what you need to get done. Right. Yeah. Cool. I think we're out of time. Um, uh, Chris, I think we are. I think so. Thank you, everyone, for attending. We'll have a link to this recording up on YouTube as soon as possible. Probably in the next, probably early to mid next week. Um, like we said, please keep adding su uh, suggestions in all of the RFCs and links that were provided in the chat. And if we need to follow up, we're going to, we can, we can always schedule another one of these. So hey, yeah, if there's, if there's interest, uh, Chris, let's schedule it and then see how many people sign up. And if, uh, you know, if, if there's interest, let's make it happen. Yeah, we can yeah. do one, say maybe a month from now, that probably good enough time. Sounds good to me. Sounds good. Cool. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Have a great weekend. Nice putting okay. some uh, faces with names. Thanks, everyone.